Let's get this going. Creative juices. Majestic, what's going on, man? I can hear myself. This is kind of weird. Is there a weird echoes or anything like that? It's like maybe I'm speaking a little louder than normal. Oh, no echo. Glorious. Oh, yeah, we can switch to the reality camera first. You can see the I've been working on the stuff around me. Hello. Oh, yeah, and you can see my you can finally see my age, my little gray hairs. Oh. Dude, thanks, Vias. Thanks for the resub, man. 18 months. Dude, that's crazy. Hi, Def Dan. <laughs> HDD. Okay. Let's, um, yes. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for the Switch Prime, dude. If you're on, uh, I think you are. If you're on, uh, the Discord, make sure to, um, link your. Twitch with it. That'll allow you to uh, gain access to the channel, the secret, the secret channels. Man, randomly I keep peeking. I wonder what's going on there. All right. So I started detailing things. La. Good stuff. Sixteen gigs of RAM. I don't. Uh, I think I only have eight. Um, <laughs> Jet, that's great. What's the figurine? Uh, I th yeah, I think I have eight gigs right now. Maybe I can uh, play with the webcam focus here. Let's see. Hello, welcome, welcome to the stream. Ah. Let's see if I can, there we go. This guy, hey, hey bro. You don't like the plant in my hair? It's to help mask my silhouette. Sounds like I should download more RAM. Yeah, let me just increase my subscription uh, someday, man. Someday. All right, let's um, let's get into this uh, focus. You can see how broken everything is. I am Groot. It's true. No, normally I probably should be sitting better, right? If I'm sitting better, I'm like sitting around here. Royce, what's up, man? Okay, so some stuff broke, as you can see. I have some stuff turned off and whatnot, but uh, you can see I changed my colors too. We got some uh, Empire color theme going on here. Anywho, I'm going to use this uh, as an opportunity to talk about how I'm trying to use um, or how I'm experimenting with prefabs and using them. Uh, the Blender learning is going well. It's, it's pretty casual. It's, it's really casual, maybe like, what's up, Auntie? How you doing? Um, oh, hi, Coyote, by the way. Um, yeah, what was I saying? <laughs> oh, the Blender stuff is, is pretty minimal. I think I'm maybe like two hours a week or something like that. It's really low. So there's a bunch of other stuff going on. After we're done with the project at work, though, I'm just going to switch to it at work and I'll struggle through it. That's how I usually learn programs is I just like hard switch into it once I'm comfortable navigating the 3D space in it and then just like throw the wheels off and uh, the training wheels and just try and try and go. And every time I have a question like how do I bevel or how do I do this or how do I do that? I just Google or the Discord or someone at work that knows it. And then maybe about two weeks in. Pretty, 
pretty normal. Panko, what's up, man? How you doing? You don't catch my stream much? What am I working on? So we're, we've been working on this temple scene for ages. Uh, the The goal is to finish this um, ASAP because I've got plans for another project that's also going to include Houdini. So we're going to be learning that on stream as well. I'm excited. Yeah, or you can me message Lucas. He'll know. Uh, okay, so let's let's go ahead and like let me collapse this down and select that. So these guys are basically the ones I'd replaced uh, and created prefabs for. So if they're pink, they're they're groups or prefabs, and then these guys are non prefabs. So they're purple if they're if they're non prefab. So what you can do is uh, at least in this view. So we'll we'll pretend that that hierarchy up there doesn't exist. Uh, you get a little arrow once you once you've made a prefab. To make a prefab, just select an object, and then uh, drag drag it into your content browser, or your tree or whatever you want to call it. Um, I just made like a prefab folder and just started dragging them in here. Um, but yeah, so once you've done that, it creates a a prefab for you. Uh, with that said, you get this little arrow when you drag them into the space. So just to keep us on track here, uh, keep the floor on, we'll turn the altar off, and we'll turn the tree off. So you can see you've got these random pieces floating around. These are just hand-placed. So you guys remember on the stream, I was doing a lot of hand-placing of this stuff. Oh, we can probably turn this into a prefab too here soon. So these are all like hand-placed, right? Oh, is this one? What is this one? Oh, that one's not. Oh, that's weird. Why is that? All right. Anyways, so you get this little arrow. So let's say let's say I drag out a prefab. Um, this guy is a prefab. You get a little arrow here. When you click it, it goes like, it's like nested. So this is the scene, and then this is the uh, the prefab. So in here, you get your own little like hierarchy. Yeah, I switched to Unity ages ago. Sorry, I didn't catch the question. I like it. Uh, I like the way it works by comparison. Oh, see, there's some. Oh, no, there's no transforms on this. What? Is there transforms on this? Yeah, see, so this is where I'm running into an issue. Is like, so this is the top of the stack, which would be the prefab. So you can see there's, there's positional and rotational transforms information on that. So I. I do need to zero all of that stuff out or else I'm placing something that's got like random variables in it. So this is gonna break, you can see that it went way off the screen. This is gonna break this one. So I'm gonna kill all the rotational information on it. Actually, hang on. Before I go crazy with this. Yeah, see it's already, it's already floating. Oh God. Oh Jesus. Yeah, I gotta fix the scale and stuff too. There's like all types of, this is, the, this is the problem with scaling. <laughs> Don't scale. Anywho, so let's look at this prefab. That prefab is uh, floor square A. If I go through and... Uh, uh, let's see here. So this one's floor square A. Or actually, where are we at here? So this one's A. And this is in the prefab uh, stack that we were looking at. Um, so I'm gonna go into this one. And before I go and fix all the positional information of it, see everything else is zeroed out, but sadly, like obviously the rocks and stuff aren't because I'm positioning them on there. Sadly, the parent is not zeroed out. So this is gonna cause some issues. I'll fix it though. All right, so. Uh, you can make things like uh, create an empty, we'll create an empty game object, and I'm using that as like a group. That way I can turn on and off things. So if I turn on the grass, you can see I'm placing grass in inside of that group. I'm like, oh yeah, no, this, this should be up here. 
Yeah, there's some there's already some positional shenanigans happening. Yeah, see how this needs to be. Uh anywho. So let's we turn the grass on there, right? Let's go back to the scene. So you can see some of them have grass now. So all the all the ones that I'm using end up having uh, grass. How do you add things to your base prefab? Uh, I mean, you just, so if I, let's say I go into this, right? Let's go into this one, go in here. Actually, I probably should, should probably should view them in here. Cause then I'm like actually looking at the, the zeroed out prefab. So once, once I correct the, the positional information, these ones are going to be the guy to go to. But um, let's select grass, and then I'll go to that just to jump positionally into the, the tree. So then going through here, let's say we want, um, I've already got rocks that I've added, and then uh, I've got a set of plants that I had added to the edge of that as well. But let's say, let's say we want to add, just to answer Judd's question. Yeah, you can double click prefabs to go into them. It's pretty nice, man. <laughs> um, so we got ground plants. Let's see, what's this one? Oh, I don't have textures on that right now. Tropical leaf scatter. Oh yeah, okay, so these leaves. So you just drag it into the scene, right? You just drag it in. This is just pretty nice. Uh, and then let's say we get this into a position that we like. Whoa, I've got some weird. Some weird like displacement stuff going on. Oh, I know what that is. It's the wind. There we go. I need to set that up still. To be us. <laughs> Okay, so we got the leaves positioned in there, and you can see the leaves are just in the stack down here. I'm just gonna put it in the, the layer leaves, or plants. And then if we go back here, you can see now it's it's positioned here uh, in each one of those. And you can see it's starting to populate based on at least where the prefabs are. So then once once you're like, all right, cool. Let's, uh, let's go and, so I've only got two prefabs, right? Let's go and look at the other prefab, so which is B. So we're here. I've already got top detail that I had added, which is like vines and uh, oh yeah, I'd even separate it out in the top because like I had originally I'd started making an upside down version of this, but I think I'm just gonna make a duplicate of this and turn it upside down and actually build it that way. So, okay, so we've got in this layer, I've got grass, I've got the vines, you can see like uh, that's uh, that's interesting. So we got the grass, vines, and rocks. Oh man, that is possibly not good. <laughs> so we got grass, rocks, vines. If we go back now, you can see that those ones have been updated. So now all of those have it, right? You can see how much more detail is happening immediately. Uh, and it looks like even this one, I've turned the plants off on it. So the other thing is now that uh, they're prefabs, you can override the, the layers. These layers will update and you can see, open up the prefab and you can see what's in it. You can manually turn them on and off, which overrides Overrides what was there before. So what I could do is make another version of this that's super like the uh, super grassed over and all that stuff. This this piece here, the, yeah, this was made in ZBrush. You're talking about just the floor piece itself, right? This guy. So we go back here. Yeah, dude, this is 
This is super powerful. I do have to reconstruct a bunch of stuff because everything seemed to have broke as far as uh, the floor tiles and stuff go. Let me see. Let me see how bad this is. Let's start turning everything on. Yeah, so it's looks like it's mainly the floor floor pieces. So the other thing that I kind of want to use you break some, you make some. <laughs> nice. So one of the things I, I want to use this whole prefab setup for as well is to create little pieces, right? So like this center piece here, let me turn the ceiling off. Where are you at? That didn't help us at all. What the hell? So like this, this ground piece here, like this whole centerpiece, that should be a prefab. Just because I need to, Avi, what's up, man? Just because like it would be easier for me to select this, go into the prefab view and then work on that by itself without having to worry about like the whole scene and looking at everything and just being overwhelmed with a lot of details where I can just focus, right? What's up, Tim? Mr. Stokes. Anywho, so yeah, I got a lot of stuff to fix. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> But uh, hopefully, yeah, see, everything's kind of misaligned now. One thing is I don't know how... Um, overall, it will speed me up a lot, in my opinion, especially when you're covering large, large pieces of ground. But like, I don't know how... Um, uh, what do you call it? I don't know how the Unity handles it on the back end when uh, you turn a layer off. So like, Force might be able to answer that, but like, if you go, so if I have this prefab right, and I've, I turn off like, oh yeah, see this one has plants, and I turn the plants off. So if I turn the plants off, and then you bake this game out, and actually ship it, is that are these plants stripped out? You know what I mean? That's the that's part of the workflow that we probably need to fix. Like that plant needs to be stripped out in order for you to benefit from being able to prop like this. Or you need to have like a batch script that deletes everything that is hidden at the end of the day. Which I think breaks prefabs. Like the prefab becomes unique because it's no longer the same as the other prefabs. Either way, we're making it look cool versus like thinking about how, how do we, how do we make this uh, efficient? Just know that deleting, yeah, deleting those would break it, which creates, makes it unique. Um, but if you don't modify the prefabs at all, you're probably in a, a pretty good spot, honestly. Yeah, it kills it would kill the instance if you delete it. Turning it off, I think maintains the instance, but I don't know like what happens. We should get we should, we need a tech artist on on board. Uh we need to know what happens if you turn the layer off. Do you still ship with it and then it looks at it and it's like that's the prefab but then this is off or does it turn it into a unique asset? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, so I guess we can maybe look at, dude, look at these. There's like so many random broken, <laughs> like, I don't even know where some of these go because they got offset so badly. So, okay, what we're going to do, actually, I think I'm just going to be making some prefabs today because what I need to do is actually correct this positional problem. And then, and then the rebuilding. Oh, dude, it's all good. I apologize to you guys because, like, we need to move on, man. This scene needs to be done, Ski. So you got to kill rotations. we got to kill the scaling. And then everything else inside is fine. 
it's crazy because if you scale it, look, it's it's scaling all of them together. So this should uh, negate you from scaling too often. So I'm just going to correct these. See this one, I, I'm debating on if this is a good idea, but I'm overhanging these plants and I'm guessing I'll just rotate it if I don't, if I don't need it there. Uh, I am not using HDRP. I will do it on the next project. How you doing by the way, uh, Montessor? Yeah, see if it's loaded into the memory, that might be better than if it was deleted because then it's just an instance of the prefab. But I don't I don't know. Oh, dude, awesome. Man, jumping into the freelance uh bucket is quite difficult. Okay, so we got this guy. That's that's cool. Oh right. I gotta kill the wind strength and all this stuff. Cause it's it's warping things for no reason. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I mean that's all it takes, right? Is you get you get your first gig and then uh, if they keep coming you start to build the the network along with it and it just kind of keeps flowing. Did you just have an image gray album? Dude, that's a <laughs> That's amazing. Uh okay, so floor square A is is uh fixed as far as I can tell. Let's double check it here. Okay, that's all zeroed out. I'm going to um I was going to make a color for it now. It's fine. So then I've got my folders there. Okay, that is good. I'm just gonna go back here. I'm gonna save real fast. I'm gonna go B, and then let's uh, let's do it to this one. The nice thing is because it's happening at the very top, uh, everything should move together. Okay, this one is good to go. See, that's the other nice thing is like, once these work, they work across the board, right? So if I check the pivot, local, yeah, so there should be pivot information happening here, but it should be correct and only this pivot information or only these transforms because if you remember the transforms were you like, like there were variables in the transforms in the prefab and then they get combined with these transforms as well which is super i don't know man it's uh it's, it's not good so the other thing with prefabs is you can select them and then there's the open here uh what is okay i'm gonna save we're gonna start clicking buttons Aha, okay, so if you click this prefab and you click select, it will jump to its location in your project. So that's cool. Uh, the hierarchy thing, this is, you mean having two of them? Is that what you mean, uh, Nathan? Oh, the fun like all this stuff here. That is um, that is a plugin. Isn't there a Q uh, hierarchy? It's dope, man. Oh, I'm good, dude. How are you? Since you've been gone, the song. Um, you can see we've only really just started adding foliage and detail and trying to simplify the complexity of how this is all working. But uh, now I think I'm getting more comfortable with Unity as well. So I'm pretty happy about how things are going, honestly. Uh, let's make 
Let's make some other prefabs, huh? So here's here's something that's kind of weird, right? So if I delete these, um, oh, I see what's going on there. So with this guy and this one, see these are separate, right? And I wanted those separate so that I could swap between like how they're being used. Now, and I wouldn't really suggest we build like this just for just for portfolio stuff you could probably do but until we know what is actually happening in the background you need to know like how how that is actually treated when it's baked down to an actual like deployable game right uh to be honest, i don't know of any hacks right now i think um i think for prefabs to be really powerful they need to be able to be scriptable as well because then like if you can get like uh basically like blueprints right the packs no this is all custom stuff okay so i'm going to select these guys and we're just going to call this uh trim wall a i'm going to drag it over here oh my bad it actually needs to be grouped see this is where it starts getting a little weird and i haven't gotten used to it yet so if i put those in this object then i can drag it over here and now i have this prefab so we're just going to call that and just call that uh trim wall a I'm going to double click that. Then we have the prefab. Now with this, oh, interesting. Hang on. Okay, so you see the, I don't know if there's a way to visualize this empty container, but the pivot for it, for some reason, is here. I'm wondering if it's inheriting the pivot of the object that it's parented to when it's created. I'm going to go back. Cause that would, that would fix a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can make variants, but the thing is, is you can't, you can't control which one you're swapping between without dragging one out and you have to download a plugin or buy a plugin to do object swapping. I think, uh, Tobias had, had uh, built one for himself that he had shared to me, but I was an idiot and didn't grab it. <laughs> uh, let me know if I'm missing anything in chat too. I feel like there's a lot of questions happening. Oh, Nathan, I'm doing pretty well, by the way. Uh, we're all moved and stuff. Can't you do that in the top right by standard? What? Do tell, do tell. Yeah, so if I select this prop and then I select this one, I wanna be able to select this, then select this, press a button and it swaps them. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so what I'm going to do is move these outside of this object again. Oh man, it thinks it's a pre okay. Hang on. I need I need another one. Well, I can just go in and grab these, paste them, so they're separate. These are their own things. Yes. Okay. So the pivot's down there. I'm gonna make an empty object here and then drag it up here move these into that and then that's uh that's awesome okay so 
So if you need the game object that you're using as a container for these, that, and then you turn it into a, a uh, see, like I want to, I want to delete that one and delete this one, and then actually make this one the, the prefab. Oh God. That's terrifying. <laughs> so game objects, if you create, if you right click on this one and you create an empty game object inside, uh, like on top of another object, uh, it inherits the pivot on creation. Um, so if you have pivots that you're like really uh, keen on keeping, I would do that. <laughs> I would do that. Uh, okay, so let's let's go ahead and grab this one, and we'll make a prefab out of this. And I need to what do I need to call it. Man, I wonder how stable prefabs are. So I'm gonna just I'm just gonna go uh, I'm gonna go into it, and then I'm gonna rename it while it's open. Interesting. It just does it. It does not update it in here though, which is interesting. So this, that is technically a prefab. And uh, I guess, uh, let's see. Let's see what we can do with that. Okay, so we got this one and this one. Let's um, this is probably wasteful the way I'm about to do this, but uh, so I'm just gonna open that one, right? And we're gonna fix the names of these so there's no extra numbers in there. This guy we need to make sure is zeroed out. And then let's uh, let's make some variants of this. Let me do this first. Uh, where am I at here? Okay, so we're in here. And just make top. I'm sure there's a of like a real way to do this. Whoop, drop, top, two, there we go. Okay, so we'll put top in here and we'll duplicate it and put that one in here. Uh, then that top we will hide, this one we will grab and we will just kinda, where are we at here, center? We'll just do this. Look at that, it's different. Maybe we'll just uh, jankify it a little bit. That's weird. I wonder why it's freaking out when I'm hiding those. Because it, it does not like that. Okay, so now we should be able to go to this one. Open that up and swap the top which gives us the other version. Which is kind of cool. So you know, we're like, oh man, there's a gap there. You can just like go back into this. We'll turn that one off, turn this one on, and we'll go here and we'll, we'll just lower it enough. Maybe we'll tilt this up too. We just hide that gap. And then when you go back, there we go, fixed. And it's only fixed on this one. <clears throat> I 
yeah, and I, I mean, I think you could do, we could do another version where like it's rotated around so that we don't keep getting the small, long, small, long. But I mean, I think at that case, maybe I can just do that. Question is, is I don't know. I mean, it's still looking at it as the prefab, right? So, and the only reason uh, you wouldn't do it like this and you're doing it the way that I was starting to build it in the, in here is if there's a lot of propping that you want to support the, that change. So like if we go to top, let's, uh, let's turn that one on and turn this one off. So if we're in this one, maybe we need like a, an empty in here. Stone, and then we need another. Grass, so you'd want grass that's supporting, right? The the propping that you've done. Let's see what's going on here. It's a single, it's a long one. Yep. That's weird. Why was that all broken? Dude, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of acting up since I. Okay, so we got this one. And we don't need that. So maybe we need this here. See, now it seems like I'm just doing this stuff over again, and I kind of am, right? But like. The nice part is now that I've placed that grass there, as long as I use this prefab, it will. Bowser, what's up, man? As long as I place that or use this prefab, that grass will always be there, right? So it's kind of like it's already been done for you, or you've already you've done it once and you don't need to do it any further, or again. Uh, let's let's get some stone. Rock. Oh, wow, man, there's some old stuff in here. Uh, mesh, share, blah. Plants, rubble, or ground bits. That's so weird that it doesn't uh, come in on top of the mesh you uh, you drag it onto. Not sure why that is like that, but whatever. Oh yeah, happy new year to you guys. Dude, crazy, right? People born in, what was, what was the phrase I was seeing online? People born in 2010 are now officially 18 this year. Is that awkward or what? Oh, it only does that if the mesh has a collider. Ah, oh, that, that makes a lot of sense. So we need to go in and add a collider or rocks. Oh, 2000. Thanks, Tobias. <sighs> I can't, uh, I can't math right now. That means they're, uh, they're turning what? Eight. Did I get that right? Eight years old, man. That's like children. If they're born in 2010, now they're going to be 19 this year. <laughs> math. Oh, it hurts my brain. Yeah, so if they were born in 2000, they will be 19 this year. If they were born in 2010, <laughs> they will be nine <laughs> this year. <laughs> Am I red yet? Is, it, is that embarrassing or what? Jesus. This is because America taught us math, not maths.
That's at least what I tell myself. Holy duh. We need it to be global. There we go. Quick maths. You see a tomato on screen? Where did Din go? Where that tomato? It looks uh, extra juicy, full of those creative juices. Am I right? Let's, uh, okay, we need, so we got those rock bits there. This is probably overkill, but uh, we can remove it later. It's always nice to just kind of go with the flow and see what things look like. And okay, so we got grass. We gotta grab the grass patches here, put that in the grass. And then we got a uh, stone, we can put that in here. Actually, those should be separate. Mm hmm. A little more gauze. <laughs> that song's weird, man. <laughs> I like it though. It's just uh, it's a strange one. Okay. I want, I want the order right. Okay, stone, rocks, grass. There we go. Cool. Okay, so we go back here. Yeah, cool. Yeah, the whole math thing on stream, I've heard that that's usually a bad idea to even attempt to math. I've only heard bad things come of those, those situations. Okay, so I think we could maybe make some grass down here. See, now that the grass is in the right folder too, when I just control D to duplicate it, it's it's in the right folder as well. Oh man, mm. feels good. Ah, oh. why? Okay, I need to understand this. It's being used by another process. Okay, so I think I think it's because I have Dropbox running. Okay. Cause I'm backing up my stuff. I need to like not have that running when I'm directly working. Yeah, I noticed that. I don't I don't know how you get around that. Oh, that's going to be I need to I'll fix that later off stream or something. The um it just needs a collider. So that it doesn't, is there a way to auto create colliders on these guys? I'm going to put this little guy on the edge here. We'll sprout. Put another one right here. Sticking out there. That's cool. Yeah. So see, when you look at it from a profile, it's like, okay, what? what looks interesting, right? And so there's there's things that break up just the straight line. So like what I've done is 
I've changed the angle of this or like dip it back and then there's the little cut ins. So they're kind of wiggling around. Uh, and then doing stuff like seeing what, what the view looks like from here. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell without the lighting looking better in this view, but uh, you can kind of see where things are at and if stuff needs to be spaced out more. You're just basically trying to come up with some type of like little micro compositions. That's probably good enough. Let me get that grass into the grass layer. And then we'll go back here. Very good. Oh, right. Sorry. Uh, we have to remember that everything that's on top of here needs to be associated with uh, the top. And if we turn that off and switch to the other one, that we don't lose the stuff down here. You know what I'm saying? So that actually needs to be uh, dragged out of that and just put here. And then see, this is where it starts to get to the point where I'm like, oh man, it would be nice if I just had the ability for it to toggle like that. Uh, it's the, um, man, I don't even, I don't even remember right now. Let me, two seconds here. It's the Samsung 49 inch ultra wide, uh, CHG 90. Uh, the only thing I would say that is the downside of it so far from my use of it is it is only a 1080, uh, resolution. So while it is very, very wide, it's still 1080, which I guess for most computers is pretty good because, uh, if you're gaming performance wise, it's going to be a pain if you're going any, any higher res than that. But if you were to, if you got the money for it, that new Dell one that came out is a, is a 49 inch ultra wide. It's the equivalent of two 27 inch screens next to each other. So it's the same as this one, but it's a 1440p as well. Bowser, check it out. Uh, yeah. So that's the, the extent of it. You can see I'm looking at chat here and then I've got whatever I search over here. You just can get a preview of the empire command. What's that? I'll tell you later. Yeah, Defcon, is that what you needed? Okay, so grass, top, and then we need there, stone. There we go. And then we've got our top and our top two. Right, so when we go back out here, we should be able to go into this prop and then turn the top off and turn the other one on, but the stuff on the bottom stays. Very good. The Predator X34A is nice, man. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so now we've got these two variants. Well, we've got the ability to do variants. Um, that now we need to make the version of this one. Dun, 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 dun. See, the other th reason that I'm separating these all out as well is like I will place all of these right on a strip and then uh, it allows me to turn on and off where I see it and where I don't see it. Like maybe this top version needs to have like a plant version too. Uh, where are we at here? Mesh, temple, plants. Grass, leaf, ground plant, leaf scatter. Now you know I, uh, games get so much detail when you when you build like this like detail goes way up and then it's a matter of battling to make sure that the it doesn't become overly detailed right So we got plants in there. Um, what else do we need? Vine? Ha! Huh, it doesn't even have the material on it. That's funny. What happened to the material? Figure that out later. Tropical leaves. Oh, that is weird. I wonder if... That's interesting. Oh, happy new year, man. How you doing? I don't know if it's Arucia, but uh, I'll see you later, man. Thanks for coming by. Oh, uh, I don't know if I saw it, but did we get alerts up here when we got the sub here? Maybe I can repeat it. I don't know if it'll actually, it doesn't seem to be repeating. Okay, I got to go back to this. I wonder if I can go in, select plants. Like, so see, we got this one here, and we got these, and this one, and this one. I think I just need this cluster here. Can I copy that and then go into this one and paste it? Oh, you can. Sneaky. Oh, that is cool, man. So maybe we take these leaves, bring them over here, over here, and bring this down, get this into position maybe somewhere around here.
Good deal. Good deal. That one's right on the edge. That should be fine. Right here. See, and then we can take this and place it here. One problem is, see, the pillar gets in the way. Meh. Man, I keep getting these weird little hangups. See, like nothing's nothing's happening. It's I don't I don't know what causes it, and then it catches back up. Now I'm not seeing it catch up, which is a little concerning. But uh, you know, stream's still running though, right? Yeah, see, it's not even responding right now. And then you're 100 yards away from where you're navigating. Yeah, it's very weird. I can still, it's like the viewport dies. And dare I save? Let me save. Yeah, it looks like the viewport crashed, essentially. I wonder if I can open. Oh, that'd be crazy. I'll just kill it and bring it back. Rip viewport. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what that is. We'll see. And then it ends up doing a bunch of this stuff at the beginning too. There's a lot of weird quirks in the most recent one. So I'm trying to understand. I'm still learning Unity, of course. So there's lots of like little weird nuances. Okay, so that is placed. It is not lined up. That's fine. We'll just bring it down here. Uh, Blender's going all right. I haven't had too much time to work on it, but it's it's getting there. Yeah, we gotta go back in here. So this needs to go in plants, and then I guess I'm just gonna move that here. I don't. I didn't like it directly centered up that was kind of weird right okay so we got this piece looks good then we need to do the variant see the nice thing is this is going to get rid of a lot of the little random propping places uh yeah nathan i am playing around in blender right now uh nothing too serious but it will happen if I like it enough, it's gonna. I'm gonna switch over. One of the main the main reasons for switching over is obviously being able to visualize stuff in that viewport is much nicer. Uh, but the, I would say, second if not the main reason is, it allows for people that are watching this stream, that are just getting into 3D, or curious where they should start, can hop into Blender for free, and I'll know how to use it. Like, because anything you learned in Blender, once you transition into another 3D package, if needed, it's just a matter of learning how to walk again. You know how to walk, you just can't physically do it yet. Like, I've switched software, like, I mean, I was 3DS Max for a, a very short while, and then I went to rhino this is all in high school and then and then i went to max again for like a year and then maya for three years and then back to max for another five years and then moto for four years almost five years now in moto and now i'm looking at blender
Let's just save the scene real quick, just to make sure nothing horrible is going on. Yeah, it's like knowing programming concepts. Yes, exactly. Oh, nice, Nathan. That's cool. Uh, I have another person to poke if I have questions. Okay, so this guy, I think what we will do with this one, we'll keep this one pretty simple. Maybe we'll uh, break up the patchiness. So we'll do that. I'm going to drag these into this. And then we need empty. I always forget F2 to rename. It's like universal. All right, let's see what we can. So what, what I just did there is I duplicated it from the, uh, the permanent ones down here and then moved it into the top, the top two group. And then I can use this as like uh, a base for anything I, I might want to place, right? So makes it much easier. So this one, we, we can keep it pretty simple. At least simple when it comes to the grass stuff. And then we can go to the this one and we can grab some stuff from this. Turn that one back off. We'll go here. Oh, there's all types of weird residual stuff inside of the, oh man, that's bad. Just for tidy reasons, it's kind of, ugh. Uh, one thing I should probably look into doing is like any of the vine stuff, like this this stuff. It might be worth having that in here as an option. So we can bring this forward maybe like that and then scale it down. Maybe it'll come through the little areas that have the, all the cracks and stuff. Oh, that area is kind of low though. I have to go in and modify the asset a bit. I mean, maybe it's not even noticeable. Like that maybe. trying to find a good spot for it. I like how this one goes down. It cuts the this little opening away. So it changes the shape of that. 
and I keep gravitating away from the center just because I don't like to center things. Maybe there. <laughs> There's still some that need UVs in there. Can you vertex snap in uh, prefab mode? Uh, yeah. That's kind of, I guess that's how I could bring those, some of those props forward. That's a good point. Um, uh, what do we got here? I need a single, a lone wolf, this one. Perfect. There we go. Oh yeah, the snapping helps me. <laughs> The vertex snapping helps. Thanks. Thanks, Jed. What's up, Sai? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I imagine as the vertices get crazy, it's probably the snapping points just get ridiculous. And then it's like, oh, it's like choking on itself. But, um, you know. Vines. Okay, so. Stones. Where are these stones located at? Ground. No, they just didn't go in there. Okay. So we got grass stones. We got the stone itself or the slab. And then vines. And then we need plants. Let's put that in there. Cool. Hey, you see how much that, that vine stuff helps us with like breakup? Oh man. I love I love breakup details. Should probably turn off most of the stuff we're looking at here. Uh, okay, so I can delete that. Got that unique vine there. Oh, right, and because this is a prefab, where are we at first? Top, left top. Yeah, okay, we need to make put that at the top there, and then we'll just drag this into there. Cool. So I'm going to turn everything off except for that area. and get a little bit of performance back. Uh, I'll be streaming for another 40 minutes. Oh, we need to make a prefab of this corner too. This corner also has a custom vine, which is pretty cool.
Making is a big headache. Nah, it's not that bad. What are you are you doing something um, while you're watching the stream and it's hurting your brain? Those are floating now. <laughs> Dope reuse, yeah. Yeah, these are uh, these are the same as this one. Just turned upside down. See now with the prefabs, I could actually build this one and remove the the base piece and get that all figured out. Okay, what do I hit next? Should I hit this corner piece and then this piece? See, with, with these ones made, oh man, there's some, some true power is, uh, is available once you have those, those three pieces because then you can technically make the entire like shape of everything here. Um, let's go into test. I'm just gonna go in and Oh no, that should be fine. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off and then test and then paste. So I've got these guys. That way I'm working super isolated. Okay, so we'll take this guy. Ah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, see, this is where the, one of the scenarios where it's like, oh, that's a prefab. Uh, but it's not giving me the prefab option. Oh, that corrected it. Interesting. So now we go in here. What is the lighting in this? Huh. There, yeah, I can work with this. That's fine. Yeah, new uh, version of Blender is pretty cool. Is there a uh, hotkey for creating empty containers? It's Tobias here. Uh, Cubasaur, what's up? Some blender streams in the future. Uh, once I switch to it, definitely. I just don't want to be streaming while I'm sitting there, like trying to figure out something simple, and you guys are just waiting to learn something. You know what I mean? Okay, so this one's this one's in a good spot already. We can just start bringing details in. I just want to grab a few pieces here. Need a 
little grass. Oh, there's one. Okay. Dope. Oh, right. Got to zero this out. Jeez. What am I even doing? So I'm under the impression based off what I've seen from Eevee and what I've uh, messed around with that you could, you could make the scene in Eevee if you don't need it to be like playable, just real time. You know what I mean? Oh man, I just finished that show uh, You on Netflix. That's a that's a crazy uh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Yeah, it is supposed to be an approximation, uh, but you can do some. You can do some uh, pretty accurate real time stuff with it. <laughs> Love waiting for Xbox bills to compile. How long are they taking you? It shouldn't take too long. Okay, you see, the way I end up using this, it's almost for sure that it will meet up with another one. So it might be in my best interest to put some grass on the edge of that. some old school sound and stuff.
Uh, the switch from EV to cycle should be pretty seamless as well. So that's going to be really cool and get some nice renders. The release of 2.8 should be uh, 1.0 of EV. I mean, they've been working on EV for three years, roughly. Okay, ground bets, ground. I mean, there's a reason that it can do so much, right? They're this is the first time they're they're writing it out. Can you imagine if Maya if Autodesk was writing the viewport for the first time? Like what they would do now? They're kind of stuck with what they have. Ugh, what is no. I don't want to see all those exceptions. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there's there's room for something there. I see it. This is uh, I'm picky about this type of stuff. Oh, I like this song. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'll leave it like that. I get a little bit of clipping. It should be fine. Should be fine. <laughs> yeah, it's uh it's got its ups and downs. I mean it's not completely there yet. It's good though. Oh yeah, I wanted to put some plants on the bottom. Yes. Where are we at here?
Oh, right. Wind. You see the uh, the silhouette not matching the leaves? I'm like, what the hell? What is going on here? Oh, she's just trying to find a good like angle where the leaves aren't clipping too strangely. There we go. Nice. Okay, clean up time. So plants, plants. Plant, plant, that's yeah, all plant, plant. And then grass, vines, yes. Back here, there we go. Does you need support alpha dithering? Yes, I've seen it. Right now I don't have it on. I don't even know if like, I just know I've seen games that have shipped with uh, alpha dithering. So we're getting some variety now. See, so if we got this piece and this one, we should be able to make some pretty nice variants. Do that. Where you'll see duping now is uh, the way the plants are spawned against the ground here. But I think, uh, I don't think that's gonna be an issue because they'll, you know, you put a bunch of propping and stuff in front of that. This one is the next in the batch. Advisable, what's up, man? Hey, thanks again for those bits. That was nice of you. I was just reviewing some of the stuff that had come through on the uh, activity feed. An enigma. Dude, he did a tier two sub. It's freaking crazy. Freaking crazy, I tell you. We're just making prefabs over here. Why is there, there's a trim B? Interesting. Under lighting, all right, cool. Boop, and then under lighting, one of these.
Ah. That's interesting. It sees it as a. Oh, no. No. It sees it as a prefab. If I place it, it's not. It doesn't have all of the features of. Yeah, and see, when I open it, it just opens FBX. Broken. Broken. You guys have a good uh, vacation? Your vacation was working all day? Oh man, I had like 10 days off or something like that. That's good, I'm ready to go back. You have a question on shaders and foliage. I have an amplifier shader. I followed sort of how you did and did a leaf on stream. I figured out a basic shader that doesn't look as good as yours. Where to learn shaders for Amplify in general. So the the way that the shaders work in Amplify are very similar to um, Unreal's. Uh, let's see if, um, why can't I, that's weird. Hang on, go back here. And drag one of these out. Huh. For some reason I can't. I wonder if my Amplify broke somehow. Anyways, uh, no, I just took what I knew from um, Uh, which we call it. Oh, thanks. Um, no, I took what I learned from uh, from Unreal. They're, they're essentially the same thing. There is a like if you look at their example files that they have in the in here. So if you go amplify shader examples assets, there should be materials. And you can you should be able to open these up and they will break break down how they're doing their stuff for you. Yeah, subsurfacing is uh subsurface is definitely something you should have. Like it's the only reason that like uh like when you look under here, the side isn't dark and you can see like um some shapes. You take the where's the light at? Like these ones, for example. Like I've painted in a mask where the subsurfacing uh, subsurface will basically display that that line in the uh, leaf itself, like the little veins. Okay, back into this one and transfer it. it yeah, I mean. The example files that are in here should have something in here for you. Like, look, there's even a, there's even a dithering example in here.
No, mine's deferred. I think my grass is forward rendering though. Oh yeah, no, good uh, good call to be us. Shader Forge tutorials also work uh, really well because they're very similar or quite similar. Thanks for the uh, heads up, by the way, Force, on the frame. I don't know why I didn't notice that. Yeah, I did the uh, I did the vines um, in um, in Moto. So like. I'm trying, I always forget like where the, is it this one? Tube, yeah. So if you do tube with uh, snapping the surface, or snapping the background, oh man, my brain's not, like I just changed gears and it's like, uh, yeah. Basically I would do this and just kind of like manipulate Like, and then I would also have snapping on, but I'm not even in the mindset right now to start going on this uh, radius. But yeah, you can just draw these out and then like, I usually just position. Cause like if you, if you need to, you can do like, I'll show you real quick here. So you see how I've lifted this one here. Um, you could, if you hold shift and click again, then you create a new one. The other thing you have to be careful about is um, this is in Moto. It's completely destructive. In this, with this workflow, you can you can do other things and make it non-destructive. But uh, this is one of the one of the things I like about Blender is it's it'll retain. Retain this info. Oh. But yeah, no, that's essentially how I was doing it. Yeah. Uh, there is a stream of me doing something from scratch in Substance Painter. You mean like creating materials and stuff? Um, I should build a a quick link page. It would uh, Tobias or anyone that may know be able to find that quickly? I don't want someone like digging for it for a while, but I'm. What are my thoughts on Blender? It's a free three D modeling package with an update that looks nice, and it's. The new update gears it towards uh, being more uni unified with the way that people expect 3D packages to work, like camera navigation and all that stuff. So, I mean, you got to ask yourself, too, what's your, what's the benefit to learning Blender? Like, that's, we're all drawn to it like a moth to a flame, right? Because it's new and hot, hotness and real-time viewport. And, but the real thing we need to, ask ourselves is does it make me faster at what I already do and of course initially it will not 
Moth to a lamp, please. I mean, we're talking about destruction here, so. <laughs> hey, advisable. No one said there wasn't glass between the two, okay? No, Blender's spline stuff is, like, why I like it currently. Because you can just add thickness to it. You concede? <laughs> that's, that's good. You regret learning Maya? Why? It's fine, man. You can't tell me it was a waste of your time to learn Maya. I mean, what it like what you're doing or what you've learned from it is is valuable no matter what, right? This one doesn't have very much like information on it that makes it interesting. Probably just leave it like that. It's not a lot to be done. I mean, I can put this grass where this moss is just because. Dude, this music is crazy. That was, that was some weird music, guys. People on YouTube, you lucked out. You didn't catch that one. Grass. Right here. Oh, what am I doing? What is happening there? There you go. Here. Oh, what are those? I have a much silhouette change stuff going on. So like when you look at it like this, what I'm looking at is this and like how much that's broken up. Cause that's how you kind of get away from the, the, like the basic look of it or like the digital aspects of it. So I think we actually need to encompass some more plant stuff in this one. Mm-hmm. Here we go. So the amount of brain ache from trying to do the simple stuff Blender lets you do. I mean, 
the simple answer is to just use Blender if you have that problem, right? Or deal with how Maya does it, I guess. Lala ducks. What's up, man? No, this is uh, this is just me doing stuff. This is an educational stream, or channel rather. So we're uh, right now we're setting up our uh, our new prefabs. Like a little bit of fog in there. Oh, that's another thing we could add. We go into this one. Yeah, this is the, so you can see the, here's the scene and here's the prefab. And I can just go back to the, if I click on this one, you can hit open and then you're in the prefab. Man, this artist that YouTube people can't hear, sadly. Uh, pretty Lights. They are amazing live. It's pretty amazing. What is going on? What? Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm using Bakery as well. Um, it's very good. I guess, yeah, it seems like a bunch of my stuff crashed, plugin-wise. Anyways, yeah, Bakery is awesome. Yeah, w there was a winter sale on it when um, uh, Force told me about it, and I was like, what is this madness? Okay, so here's the thing I don't like. Uh, Boop, 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 boop. See how those are evenly like uh, placed? Gotta, gotta break that up. I do want plants down here, but uh, we gotta, gotta nip that in the butt. go and then maybe we'll bring this one out a little more forward it's like trying to just wipe out some patterns that are forming oh, it's still bugging me mm. all right this one we take this one we open that up and we'll go here we'll move the grass here and we'll take the plant and we'll move it here That should fix it. Nice. That's a little better. Yeah, Bakery is a GPU light map baker for Unity. Progressive light map baker currently in Unity is broken unless um, unless uh, Nvidia updated drivers. Like I guess there was a driver conflict and it just keeps failing. But progressive on the last version was really nice. Either way, bakery is the fastest I've experienced so far. 
It can do the entire scene with the max of 40, 4096 light maps at its largest for the entire scene in 20 minutes. Okay, so I've got these versions. Let's make sure that this is all grouped up. We've got plants, rocks, grass, and then the stone base. Yep, cool. So I guess I can show you guys the, oh wow, it's 10.03. I didn't realize what time it was, guys. Um, that sucks. I have to go. But uh, before I go, thanks for hanging out, guys. There's 42 of you here. If you have not, go ahead and follow the channel. We do this Mondays and Thursdays. Mondays, I usually do a focus stream, which is two hours. And then on Thursdays, I do uh, portfolio reviews, usually. Today, I did a focus stream. But uh, portfolio reviews, I do four for the first hour. And then I go into our Discord, which is this guy here. And uh, you get to see... Uh, things and critiques, I'll, I'll critique. Oh, that's cool. Um, other than that, yeah. I look forward to seeing you guys for the new year. I think this will be, this is going to be three years of us doing this. Something like that. Anyways. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys later. Have a good weekend, and I'll see you guys on Monday. If not, I'll see you guys on the uh, Discord. Place is crazy active. Anyways, I get get to a, a bigger version of me. Hello. I'm gonna do like this. Thanks. Thanks for coming. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>